What's up everyone? Jeremy here from MTG Headquarters. I'm going to do a little bit of a tutorial type video. <clears throat> so a lot of people are asking, especially now that um, I'm on Puka Trade and the link will be in the description below to come trade with me. Um, how do they ship international? So a lot of people are like really worked up about sending internationally and one of my one of my earliest uh, things I noticed <clears throat> was the community where I trade, there's a lot of international people that want certain things that I have, but not always a ton of people here in the United States. And since I ship a lot of stuff for the channel, I've kind of developed some systems around um, shipping internationally. It's much simpler than you would think. So a lot of people think, oh my God, I have to ship internationally. I have to fill out one of these custom forms that are kind of scary and the addresses are always kind of weird and I don't know how to fill them out. Here is how I do it. What a lot of people don't know is there's actually a stamp you can buy that's kind of like a flat rate international. It's a dollar fifteen, So that will dispel, first of all, the cost, right? Because I don't even know what regular stamps are now. They're probably close to a buck uh, as they sit now. Uh, so it's $1.15 for a global letter. Now, you have to be careful because the post office defines certain things as like correspondence. And then if it's too big of an item, it'll be a package. And then you'll really have to pay. But um, this little stamp for a dollar gets you up to one ounce. So if you use a bubble mailer and like a couple of magic cards or uh, like an invitation envelope. I actually like these two because the cards don't fly around in them a lot. Uh, you can be well under the one ounce limit. So a single MTG card weighs about, so, oh, by the way, so some simple math. Um, an ounce is 28 grams. Uh, so a single man magic card weighs about two grams. A top loader weighs about seven or eight grams. Um, like a sleeve might weigh a single gram. And then like a white mailing envelope, three grams, or like a bubble mailer, nine grams. So you have 28 grams. So let's say I send a bubble mailer, that's, uh, let's even call it 10 grams. A Narset, that's 12. A top loader, let's round up. That even takes us to 20. Okay. Um, and that's it. We're well under the 28 grams that we need. And I also like to include a piece of paper and usually I'll write something on it. Um, and fold it up and then put the card in there. So um, it more closely defines correspondence. I would write something like, oh, here's the card you wanted or something like that. And then if I'm using Puka Trade, I write the trade number on it. So one little thing I've seen uh, some more experienced traders use is a single top loader with like a piece of paper over the top. Usually I tape it, but all you do is let's say I'm sending out this Narset, which I will be later today. And I'm sending it to Canada, actually. So I put it in the top, in the sleeve, the penny sleeve, then in the top loader, okay? Then, um, I usually just pound it down a little bit. Then you could take a piece of tape, tape this on, and then if you're trading on Puka Trade, you just write the trade number right here on this piece of paper so that when it gets there, now you know um, now when somebody's opening it, I also write the trade number on the back of the envelope here or on your bubble mailer. So you can just put your card in your bubble mailer. So if I'm sending something expensive, um, I'll use a bubble mailer for sure. Uh, but then I always, uh, rather than if I'm using a bubble mailer, I try to weigh it first or at least take it to the post office and have them weigh it. Cause especially with international, you want to make absolutely sure that you pay enough postage. So if it's right on the line, I'll go down to a regular envelope if I have to, but then you just stick the uh, international stamp on there, write your return address on here on the upper left. And then as a, as a precaution, I actually, usually when I'm trading somebody uh, internationally, I will ask them, please tell me exactly how to write your address on the envelope. So sometimes if I'm sending to like Canada or Australia or someplace like that, their addresses are very closely um, resemble addresses I'm used to writing here in the States. So it's not that big of a deal. But if I'm sending to some other country where they have a very different type of mailing, 
um, system or address system, I always make sure and ask, is this how it, you write it on your envelope? And if they're an experienced international trader, especially like those on Puka Trade, you will uh, be able to, they'll tell you. I mean, everyone wants to make sure they get their package, right? And I've sent probably 500 international packages over the last two years with play mats and everything. I've only had two not get there. And one of them ended up getting returned to me like six months later. I don't know what happened to the other one. The point is, the rate at which international mail is lost, while it is a little bit higher than domestic, I really haven't had a problem. If you take the precaution and make sure you have the proper postage and you write everything on here, how it's supposed to be written, it almost always gets there. So you really shouldn't fear um, international uh, trades. It opens up a huge market. I know uh, having a somewhat larger collection, there are a lot of people over in Europe that need certain things. And the extra 20 cents it cost me to ship uh, international is really irrelevant. You just maybe trade them a couple cards to make sure it's worth it, right? It's going to cost you, you know, $2 in material or a dollar in material plus a dollar in a stamp. If you were to sell the same $40 Narset on something like TCG Player, um, you know, they would take $5 of that in fees anyway. This way you can trade here for me on Puka Trade, I'm able to trade away some of the cards I don't need and accumulate points and then trade those points for cards I do need. So if you do want to trade with me on Puka Trade, there'll be a link in the description below where you can sign up. It's totally free. And then once you sign up, send me a message and um, I'll send you a link to my collection, everything I have for trade, because they still don't have it really set up easy where you can just see somebody's trade binder, or at least I haven't figured that out yet. Um, but sending internationally is easy peasy. Uh, this isn't like 30 years ago where you really, really, really need to worry. I mean, the mail system has gotten really good. And like I said, especially if you're sending to Canada, Mexico, Australia, anywhere in Europe, you know, I've sent to Japan, China, all that stuff, totally fine. Um, so just thought I'd let you guys know about the stamp and about the way I ship international. And hopefully that'll give you guys the confidence you need to open up uh, your trade binder to some international people. And uh, it's a great way to meet new people and uh, kind of grow your your influence and grow and uh, take advantage of a huge MTG community. So if you guys have any questions about international shipping, I ship a ton. Um, if you ever have questions, so you can ask your post office. So hope to see you guys over on Puka Trade. Even if you're not using Puka Trade, hopefully this helps you uh, send your trades internationally safer and easier. So thanks for watching this video. We'll talk to you again real soon. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, check out some of our most popular playlists from MTG vlogs, sick gameplay videos, new product breaks, and some insane vintage openings. I upload three to four new Magic the Gathering videos every week. So if you haven't already, please take a moment to crush that subscribe button to join one of the fastest growing Magic the Gathering channels on YouTube. Talk to you later.